Fody. So Fody is a really cool, it's called a property, it's called a, uh, this, is, this is it here, Fody is, it, it builds itself as an extensible tool for weaving .NET assemblies. And uh, if you go in, it's basically, uh, it's basically AOT, AOT, A, I, A, O, uh, it's, <laughs> it's doing cross-cutting concerns across your app. So anywhere you have code that you want to do consistent changes everywhere, and, and instead of copying and pasting the same code, you can use Fody. One of the, it's got a plug-in system. It's got a really cool plug-in system where you can have a whole bunch of different things. And they've got a list down here of all these cool plugins that they've got. So for example, they have a, uh, I have like a null checker. Null guard, yeah, this one's cool. So they can add null argument checks to all of your methods. If you have a, like a not null attribute, it'll just automatically put in the code that says if it is null, then throw an argument null exception, which is really which is really cool. Like you don't have to write all that code; you can just throw in this uh, null guard. Um, but what what is probably the best feature of it at all is called the uh, Property changed. Yeah, here we go. Property changed. This injects an I notify property changed code into properties. So if you're looking at the code in the calculative view model, if you're looking at this and thinking, oh, Lee, are you telling me? that I have to write that crap for every single method in my view models that's gonna push down stuff, that is a huge pain in the butt. I mean, that that's that's like a ton of just boilerplate, chrome, crappy code that just, it's plumbing. I don't wanna to have to do that, right? Well, if you're willing to accept a little magic, then you don't have to. The magic is Fody, and here's how we're gonna implement it. Um, we're going to, pull down into our portable class library. We're going to add a reference, a manage NuGet packages, and we want, well, if there's, there's, you can get Fody by itself. There's Fody, um, but that doesn't give you any of the plugins. What we really want is the property changed, mm, property changed dot Fody, yes. So all of the Fody plugins are like, Plugin name dot Fody. So this is property change dot Fody. We're going to install the latest stable version of this. Okay. And what it's going to do is it's going to look for every single class that implements I notify property changed. And it is going to allow you to just go back to get set and delete all of that. Now, if this worked, I should just be able to hit F5 and it's just gonna work, right? Um, a couple of things to be aware of. It's added a fodyweavers.xml file in here into the root. And this is basically a list of your plugins. So we have we have one plugin active right now, which is the property changed. And you'll notice in our references that there is a property changed reference, property changed. And, and what this is doing, and I wish I could tell you the details of how it's working, but basically at compiler time, probably using Roslyn, it is injecting itself into the compiler process and putting in the code that we just deleted for every single public property on a class that implements I notify property changed in the mobile calc portable class library. I'm just going to hit F5. This is going to work. I'm telling you, this is going to work. And it's going to be a little anticlimactic because you're going to just see it work the way it used to. But the beauty is we've just deleted a lot of boilerplate code. And if you're willing to accept that magic, really really is nice one oh it worked it worked one plus nine equals ten. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's great to see that is great to see okay i think that's probably worth a check-in right there right then we have 
CS Proj. And let's just take a look at what it did. I love going back over to Git and just taking a look at what's changed. So we've got a new Git package import stamp. I have no idea what that is. Uh, we did add in our Fody Weavers XML. I showed you that earlier. Um, because this is the first time adding any NuGet packages, we now have a packages.config down here, which is just going to include Fody and property change.fody. That makes sense so far. And then we're going to include a reference to the property changed DLL here. And probably we're going to implement ensure NuGet package build imports. Oh, that's just a NuGet y thing. Um, yeah, that's just a warning if, oh, no, if Fody, yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, more importantly, we just deleted these lines of code. We went down from 21 to 11 lines of code with the addition of just a couple things. Okay. That all looks good. Now... You might be looking at you might be looking at this code down here and saying, well, do we still need that? Uh, I don't think we do actually. I think we can get rid of uh, this code. And then I think we can get rid of this too by putting this in a base class. Real nice idea is to have a base class for all your view models. Now's probably a great time to go ahead and implement that. We're gonna have a um, view model base or base view model? Think view model base. I think you're supposed to put base at the end. I can never remember. There's a standard out there somewhere. In fact, someone, someone come on live and tell me that I need to do it. I forgot to pull up my dashboard to see if anyone's been chatting with me. I s sincerely apologize for that, although I didn't look like anyone was on tonight. Nope. All right, so we're going to just put in an abstract abstract class because we don't want anyone to instantiate this thing, but we do want this to inherit from, well, I know if I probably changed on the base class, and this should still work. And then we should pull in this event here. Now, when we, when we get around to implementing a real framework, and I think we're getting close. Such as MVVM Cross or uh, Simple MVVM, Easy MVVM, MVVM Lite, such as MVVM Lite, they're gonna give you all of this functionality for free. They're gonna give you a base class, a view model base class that you're gonna need to inherit that's gonna look a lot more complicated than this right here, but it's going to it's going to give you a lot of benefits. One of the benefits it's often going to give you is thread safety because we're not really worrying about thread safety in this in this context, but it's not really a problem for us yet. But good view model base, real handy thing to have, and ooh, we got to get rid of all of our using statements. We can make that private. Initialize field from constructor. Why do we want to do that? String display. Do we use display? Wait. Yeah, we used it. Oh, we don't need display anymore because we converted it back into a property there. Very nice. Okay. Now we've cleaned this up a lot. Should we check it back on the iPhone? Sure, let's check it back on the iPhone. If this works, we will want to tell everybody that we have introduced a view model base. And moved property changed event into it. So because really all of our view models are gonna want an iNotify property changed. Oh, here we go. It must have finished. One plus seven 
equals 8. That makes me happy to see. It still worked. Everything's good. We can use a view model base and we can stage all. And let's commit that. Well, let's let's do this. We've got 10 more minutes and I, I think it would be fun to I'm tempted to struggle with that that